Hi guys, Hallie Mecker here with Instructional Tech. I'm excited to talk to you today about choice boards within Seesaw. We're gonna talk about the why. Why are you going to wanna give students choice in their learning? And then we'll jump onto Seesaw and actually see what it looks like to create a choice board within the Seesaw platform. So let's first focus on that why. Why do we wanna give student choice? So giving students choices, real choices in the classroom, having to do with maybe the materials they study, the assignments they complete, maybe even the peers they work with, um, and so on, can really boost our student engagement and motivation. It often allows for students to capitalize on their strengths and then enable students to really meet individual learning needs. Research has proven that choice can both engage students or have little to no effect on ink outcomes. And so we wanna make sure that the choices that we're giving students affect student achievement. So there's really three main focuses that you wanna focus on when we are trying to increase student achievement and engagement with choice. So student autonomy comes not just from participating in the process of choosing something, but rather that the choice that they're picking is personally meaningful. So they need a choice that they actually want to choose, an option that is worth choosing. Students also need to feel competent. So students feel competent when they believe that they know what they needed to do to be successful. Okay, They need to believe that they're capable of mastering the challenge in front of them. Okay, And the last one is relatedness. So relatedness is this idea of feeling close to people or a sense of belonging in a group. Okay, And so when choice interferes with relatedness, and students believe that their choice will lead to maybe rejection or humiliation or some sort of teasing, then students are less likely to feel like they have autonomy and competence in those tasks. So student choice needs to support students' sense of relatedness in a group, that they're able to work within a group cohesively. All right, so here I am on Seesaw. I am in the middle of creating a new activity. I'm going to be creating a choice board for my students, something that they need to interact with, but they aren't gonna put any work on this choice board. So I'm gonna house this choice board in my example. I do that for one really important reason. When my students go to turn in their work on a template, I don't wanna to have to skip past all the choice board pages in order to see their work. I want the first page that comes up when I'm looking to assess student work to be their actual work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep this in the example. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my example. And I'm starting with a blank slide. Now, the type of choice board I'm imagining that I wanna create right now is where I have students have a few options where they can learn from materials, and then a few options that of like websites they can explore, and then maybe three options of what they might wanna create. Okay, so this is almost gonna look maybe like a tic-tac-toe board. So I'm gonna go ahead and I start by putting in a background, and I always put this background in. Um, and I don't keep it this way, but I use this as a way to make sure all my items are straight. My lines are never on there straight if I have to rotate lines. Um, and so I use this background to kind of just give myself a way to guide where the things are on my page. So I'm gonna start by setting up a grid. I'm gonna go ahead and insert a shape and just grab a line. And I'm gonna create a tic-tac-toe board on this, on this grid. I can make the line a little bit thinner and then I'm gonna change the color here just to black. There we go. I'm gonna copy and paste. I just do that with shortcuts on my keyboard Control copy, control paste, so control C and control V. There we go. I'm gonna make another one, but this one I'm gonna to have to go ahead and rotate. So I'm gonna make it shorter and I'm gonna rotate. And this is where the lines come in really helpful. You see how I can just rotate it and make sure it's lined up. I, I very seldom get it perfect, but you can get it pretty close um, by using these grids. So I've got that. I wanna make sure it's not going off the page. I'm gonna push this button because this finger is in my way. I'm gonna push that button and just make sure, see it's off the page, which sometimes makes it look kind of wonky on the student iPad. So I make sure everything fits and then control paste again. 
here we go. That looks a little big. All right. So now I have my tic-tac-toe board. I'm going to bring my all my menu options back by pushing this pencil. There we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and put in some, maybe some text boxes to change the look a little bit. I'm going to maybe give it a color. Um, how about we go with maybe like a blue? And then I like it to... I like it to look like this. Nope, nope, nope. Mm, let's do that one. There we go. And so I'm just gonna copy and paste this box over and over again. Um, that way they're all a similar size. I don't have to continue to recreate text boxes. All right. So I found that using keyboard shortcuts really saves me a lot of time. Um, pushing the three dots and duplicating, it just seems to take too long for me. I like to keep my hands on the keyboard, and so moving things around quickly helps me. There we go. I've got my text boxes ready. Now I can probably take off this background and add in a different background. There we go. That looks nice. There, evenly spaced. Perfect. So now I have my options. Um, so I need to think about how I want students to engage with this choice board. Do I want them to work across the top or do I want them to work in columns? Um, I'm going to have them work in rows. And so over here on the side, I'm going to go ahead and include another text box that might say like learn, explore, and create. So again, I'll just use copy and paste here and I'll make a label for all three of my rows. Okay, so I have my options here. Um, something that I already have created is I have a Google Doc here that already has all the information that I want my students to access. I have where they can maybe learn from, I have where they can explore, and then some options for them to create, and even extensions at the end if there's someone who needs some extended learning. And so what's nice about gathering this information ahead of time is that I can simply copy and paste. And so if I copy this text, I can paste it in here. It is going to resize it. And so I'm going to have to change that so it fits. Now looking at that, I decided I can't read that. And if I can't read it, my students won't read it. So maybe a dark color would be better. There we go. So I want this to link somewhere. I have it linked here to an Epic collection. So I just tap on that link. And this option right here is to copy the link. And I'm going to attach that link to this text box by pushing the three dots and going to link and just pasting that in. So now students, when they click on this link, it takes them to that Epic collection. Now, if you have students who um, are not readers and you would want that to just be an image, we can do that as well. So if I have this video that I want students to have an option of watching, I can insert that link and just paste it right there and then the picture is going to come up for that video. I hope we all recognize Kid President. So maybe that's an option for students. Sometimes I even put two videos. So if it's a video and not a text, um, I'll put two in there because usually the videos go quicker and we need more content for students. There we go. So now they have two options in that one box. And then this last one is a timeline. So maybe I'll do text for that one. I just double cut, paste, change the color, and then make sure it fits. So we know that this corner resizes the text and the side boxes drag it out. So there we go. Again, I wanna link that to this timeline. So again, if your students are not readers, you could always just link the put the link right there. Um, you also, now that we have the option to add audio to every text box, I would push the three dots and push voice, and I would record. Read this timeline of the civil rights movement. So now not only can students listen to what it says, they can push the link and get to where they need to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish filling in this choice board. 
Um, and while I'm doing this, you can go ahead and pause the video. If you're interested in working on trying to create this portion on your own, go ahead and push pause and see what you have created. So you can see that I am just simply copying and pasting links over from my planning document into my choice board. I really like to use those images um, to help students really see where they're going to be clicking and where they're headed. I didn't love the look of the black, so I changed that over to white, and I had to make some of my text boxes a little bit bigger um, just to change the look of that. When you're copying and pasting large chunks of text, um, you do sometimes have to resize to make sure that font is small enough to um, fit on there on your choice board. Okay, so I have all of my content put in. I have all of my options for what I want my students to learn from. I have all the places where I want my students to explore. And then I have their create options. They're going to draw, write, or create something. So they have those options. Um, at the top, I went ahead and I entered a text box and I wrote direction, choose one option from each row. Um, this is another great place to put in an audio. So you can have the audio directions for your students. Um, simply by pushing the three dots and again pushing voice and then reading those directions to your students. You're making learning accessible to all students. Now when I look at this, for my older students, I think this looks like something they could manage. For a younger student, this might look a little overwhelming, like there is a lot going on. They're not going to know that this is a row. They're going to try to go down. They're going to do a tic-tac-toe board. Um, and so there's another way you could set this up also that I found very successful. And that's separating the learn, the explore, and the create onto their own pages. So I've already created this for you. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you. So on this first page, I have the learn options. This is great when you want students to pick more than one. So on this first example, they're only picking one from every row. Here they can pick two. So choose two options here to learn from. Again, I have linked the pictures. So all they have to do is click the image and it takes them where they need to go. Then I create that same slide for explore. Now they're gonna choose one option to explore from. When done, move on to the next slide. And then they have their create option. So they have three places, three things that they could do to create and they only need to pick one option. All right, so let's say for example, I decide to go with the choice board that's three separate slides, the learn, the explore, and the create slides. Now remember, I've created this in my example so the students can access it, but they can't change or modify it. But I do need to create a template for them to turn in their choice project. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a template. I always find it's easiest, even if you're adding almost a blank space for students, it's easier than just having them choose an option. Sometimes when they have to choose an option, they feel like they don't have to turn anything in. And we wanna make sure they turn in their choice project. So I'm just gonna give it a background, and then maybe at the top, I would write their directions. So I'm gonna have them attach your choice project here. I'm gonna change the look of that a little bit so it doesn't take up so much space. And that's simply, I'm just gonna add it just like that. Now there's a template here for students to turn in their work. Um, so they have their example and their template. I of course would add my instructions here. Um, I would add voice instructions so students can hear what they have to do as well. And then I would save this. So what students would see is they would have this example here. They would click on the example they would be able to access all of the resources that they need in the learn and then all the resources they need under explore and then create. They have three options here that they can do. Um, something that you might find helpful is you could always um, take a picture of this. You could screenshot this. So if you are on your Dell laptop and you're trying to screenshot your screen in front of you so you can take a picture, um, you're going to go into your bottom left hand corner and open up your menu. And just in that search bar, type in snipping tool. Um, that should be, you should get a result at the top that's a snipping tool. Your whole screen will kind of gray out and you'll get a little crossbar. You might have to push new. You push new and then you'll get a crossbar. Um, 
Um, and from there, you can click and drag, and you could highlight anything that you'd want to take a picture of. Now, I'm on a Mac, so it looks a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to screenshot and just take this as a picture. And I could even put that into my template so that my students could have easy access to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some changes on here. And on this slide, I'm gonna add that picture that I just took. And I'm even gonna make it pretty small and maybe put it in that top corner. And then I could add a text box that just simply says, um, ask to help reminds them that their choice product options are here. I'll make it nice and, there we go, make it nice and small. Doesn't take up too much room. So a student can always grab this, make it larger if they need to see their options and then make it smaller again. So now there's a template for students to put their work on attached on your assignment as well. Another resource you have available to you is a choice board template. So let me go ahead and open this template up to see what you can use. So this is not created within Seesaw. Um, this was created within Google Slides and then brought as a background and brought in um, so that we could have these boxes here that kind of look organized. Um, so this is a this or that choice board. Students, students can choose to create do this activity or this bottom activity. So this is completely editable by you. Obviously, you'd put in your activity here. You could change these words across the top. So there's also one with only three options. And then there's some bingo board options where you can um, choose out which um, directions you'd like. If you wanna have a student do one assignment each day, maybe you're trying to get them to do three in a row, things like that, you can change out those directions. And then also a bingo board that does not say bingo across the top. So those options are available to you um, in the activity library. Um, it'll also be included in the links below in the description of this video. So if you were going to use this with your students, you would simply um, copy and edit it and then edit the template. So when I go into edit here, I can change my text. I would delete the slides that I don't want. So maybe I wanted to use this bingo board here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these other slides. So I select slide one, push the three dots and just push delete page. And it will get rid of that page for me. I'm going to go ahead and do that with page, that page as well. And then I'm going to use the one without the bingo at the top because I'm not trying to have students actually get anything in a row. So I'm going to delete that one as well. Okay, so here we are. Here are some direction options. Complete one assignment each day. Complete three in a row or get all four corners. Complete any three activities. And so I like the complete one each day. So here's my directions. I would make sure to add audio to my directions, right, so that learning is accessible, and then putting in my work here. So it's that easy to assign to our students, to edit a template, um, and then are there instructions here? There's not, so I would add my instructions for my students here. There we go. And I would simply save and assign this to my students. Okay, so it's ready to go. Um, so those templates are available for you as well. So I hope you found this as an easy way to add student choice into your Seesaw activities. Uh, make sure you reach out with any questions. You can go ahead and drop them in the comments below and let us know how you're using choice in your classroom. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.